a little while ago, I made a video about how I make money and that video was very popular. So in today's episode, I'm gonna share with you some advice based on my own experience on how you could make money if you have a camera and you want to do photography. Now, please keep in mind that this is just what I've gone through and other photographers might have different experience, different advice as well. So just listen to what I have to say, listen to what other professionals with more experience than me have to say, and then through trial and error, figure out which route is best for you. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later on. Now, I want to make one thing very clear. This video is not an anti nine to five, escape the matrix, sit on the beach in Bali and make six figures in six minutes type of bullshit. I mean, that's a separate discussion, but this video is not that. To be honest, the most common advice I give to people is to actually have a solid nine to five where hopefully you're paid well, you have flexibility and you're actually happy and then have photography as a little side hustle, side income, or just a very involved hobby. To be honest with you, having photography, let's say bring 20 to 30% of your income a year, and having a nine to five that covers all your bills and all the main things is actually a much less stressful way to enjoy this hobby and make some money compared to relying 100% on photography. Don't get me wrong, if all you want to do is photography, you don't want to work for someone else, by all means do so. Just don't think that escaping a nine to five and then hustling 24 seven is a better way to do photography. But this is a whole separate discussion. It was just a statement that this is not a shitting on a nine to five type of advice. Now, in my experience, there are only two main avenues one can make money with a camera. The first one being a traditional freelance path where you effectively sell your time, sell your skills and your services to a client who then in turn gets photos. And the other route is to build an online audience around your photography if you're more on the art side. Now, of course, there are other ways one can make money with photography. I personally know someone who has a full-time nine to five as an in-house photographer and he absolutely loves it. However, they don't come around as often, at least in my opinion. So the two main ways to focus on is either freelancing or building an audience. Now let's dive deeper into the freelance side. If you're starting completely from scratch, the first thing I would say is try to think roughly what interests you because perhaps you already like the idea of shooting weddings. Perhaps you already like the idea of doing uh, food photography or doing automotive photography, product photography, portraits, whatever it is. If you have a rough idea, just start offering free shoots to people who might need that stuff. Now, there is a lot of debate over why you shouldn't do free shoots and should always be paid. But the reality is, if you have no track record, why would someone pay you? If you have no track record, the only bargaining chip that you have is your time and doing it for free. You know, if someone came to me and they said, um, I'm going to be your video editor, for example, and I said, okay. And they said, but I've never done video editing before. I wouldn't probably hire them. I wouldn't want to spend money on someone that I don't know with no proven track record. But if they've come to me and said, look, I've just started video editing. I'm not, I'm not experienced. However, let me just edit a few videos for you for free. And then that way I get experience and I get something for my portfolio then it's a much better deal. So although I understand where some people say, no, you must always charge. And again, don't let yourself be used by someone. That's a whole separate topic. I do think that if you don't have a portfolio to show a client, what, why would they trust you? Why would they even invest their time in you? So that's the first step. Now, if you say to me, I have no idea what I want to shoot. All I know is I enjoy taking photos, but I love shooting cars, food, people, this, that, the other. Then do everything. Whatever job involves a camera, do it. Shoot it for free. And over time, you will figure out what you like, what you don't like. I've shot one wedding before, and it was the single worst experience of my life. I hated it. It's not for me. I don't like being around so many people. I don't like the whole noise and the pressure. It's just not me. Whereas other people absolutely love it. So when you start going for different types of photography, you will figure out, actually, I like portraits more. Maybe I like events more. 
And after a little while, you will have a rough direction. Now, once you have a direction, this is where I suggest getting very niche. Because the more niche you are, the easier it is for a client to figure out if you fit into what they want. So for example, let's say if you do fitness photography, however, you do a bit of uh, football, you do a bit of tennis, you do a bit of gym, you do a bit of this, then for a client, it might just be a little bit confusing as to what exactly you specialize in. However, if you say you do fitness photography and you specialize in high contrast bodybuilding gym photos, then anyone who's looking for that specific style can come across your profile and immediately know if you fit into what they want or not. Whereas if they come across your profile and you have bodybuilding, then you have go-karting, and then you have tennis, then you have baseball, whatever, they might think, well, what am I gonna get? So this is where, in my opinion, being as niche as possible is better. Now, don't get me wrong, 10, 15 years down the line, when you've built a big name for yourself, you can expand a little bit. But at least initially, I suggest the more niche, the better. So you've done some free shoots, you have a good idea of what niche you want to get into, and perhaps you also have a bunch of photos from your previous shoots that you've just done. Next thing I would say is build a website, have it simple, basic, straight to the point, no fancy animations or weird stuff, and open up a social media profile dedicated to your photography, not to your cat, not to your car, not to your holidays, to your photos. Once you've done that, then go on Instagram, go on YouTube, go anywhere where your clients are. Even, you know, say if you're into fitness, go into fitness shows and trade shows, all this kind of stuff. And basically start pitching to as many people as possible. Because at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. You're going to get rejected so many times. But for every, I don't know, 10, 20 rejections, one person might say yes. Now, this is where the whole kind of grind side of it comes in. Because certainly for the first few years, you'll have to work your ass off. And you'll have to keep reaching out and finding new clients. And this is a bit of a shock that many people get. Because when they go from a hobby photographer to a professional photographer, the amount of actual photography that they do reduces because now their main priority is to get money in the door. And the only way to do that is to keep finding clients, keep pitching to clients. Go back to the free shoots that you've done two years ago and see if they actually want a paid shoot now. And your job is marketing, is getting your name out there, getting your work out there and getting people to know who you are. And as you're doing it, make sure that the quality of your work is incrementally going up. Make sure that your knowledge of your subject is also incrementally going up. And as those things are going up, so will the money that you charge. Now, I can't tell you how much money you need to charge because it depends on what country you live in, what city you live in, and the general market for that photography within that specific area. You can easily charge a hundred pounds an hour in one city and you wouldn't get 20 quid an hour for the same thing somewhere else. So for that, it's a case of just trial and error, and perhaps reaching out to photographers within your area just to get an idea of what they might charge for something like that. Now let's talk about building an audience around your work online, and then providing enough value to them over time so they feel compelled to support you financially. This is obviously the route that I've decided to choose after trying freelancing for a bit. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the main bit of advice I have for you, it's actually similar to freelancing because initially, if you have no idea what you like, you need to try and shoot different things until you figure that out. So that could be street photography, travel, landscapes, portraiture, whatever it might be, have a rough idea what you like. Because if you open an Instagram account or if you just start sharing your photos on the internet, Today you're sharing street photography, tomorrow you're sharing landscape photography, and the day after that you have some edgy self-portraits. Who's gonna follow you? Because people just wouldn't know what to expect. I would never follow someone like that because it's like, well, what is this? Over time, you'll also need to figure out what you like. And then you have to at least initially stick within that niche to build an initial audience. When I started out, my niche was London, and street photography. And only now, five, six years later, have I started slightly delving into other types of photography, such as travel and some nature. But realistically, you need to pick a niche 
and stick with it, at least initially. Now, if you don't care about building an audience, forget this advice, shoot whatever you want. But if you say to me, no, I want to build an audience, you need to have some kind of a direction. You can't just be spraying and praying and hoping for something to come your way. The other thing, which is the uncomfortable truth, so the light keeps going in and out. The other thing is that maybe in 2015, 2016, you could have just shared your photos and people would have started to follow you. But today, I don't think that's the landscape that we're in. I think realistically, you need to offer more value than just sharing your photos because there are so many amazing photographers online. Why would someone follow you over someone else? Now, this is where, unfortunately, I have to say that perhaps think about teaching other people what you might know. Even if you're just one or two years into photography, it'll be easier for you to relate to someone who just started than perhaps for me, who is six, seven years into it. Certainly, someone who's 10 years into it will find it more difficult to relate to someone who's just picked up a camera yesterday, whereas for you, it might be easier. So think about all the issues and the problems that you've had one or two years ago when you first picked up a camera and think how you can help someone. That's one thing you can do. Equally, if you live in a very touristic city, perhaps you can create a guide or create some kind of content around how to get the best photos in that city. So you're saving people time. At the end of the day, yes, you need to get better as a photographer, you need to progress, you need to keep posting your photos, but you also need to add something else that gives people value other than just looking at your photos. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some photographers, one in a million, who are so good, they don't need to do this, they just share their work online, and their work is so good that it just goes. But I think in today's climate, it's becoming more and more difficult to do that because it's more saturated. Photography has become so democratized that now there are so much people of talent that it's become even more difficult to stand out. So my advice, as I've said, is to try and figure out what other value you can provide to people who are following you other than just, here's my photos. Now, you have to be patient. Let me give you some context. I opened my Instagram account on the 1st of January, 2018. In the first two years of posting nearly every day, I had 2,000 followers. I opened this YouTube channel. Uh, the first video went up in August, 2019. And the first four months of weekly uploads, I had 100 subscribers. So this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It feels overnight, but then you also, when you've actually kind of not made it, but when you've at least got some traction, but the problem is to get that traction takes a long time. So don't go in expecting, you know, you're gonna get your big break in three, four posts. Again, you might do, it does happen, but if it happens, it's a bonus. Just don't try and um, push for that. And this brings me on to another topic, which is going viral. Avoid going viral for something that you don't want to be known for. So let me explain. Let's say you're into landscape photography and your landscapes don't get anywhere. You, get, you take great photos, but just no one's watching it. No one's liking, no one's following. You see that street photography has become a bit trendy these days. So you decide to make a reel, a video, a set of photos about street photography, and that goes viral. There is no method for going viral, there is no hack or anything like that, it's literally luck. It goes viral, and all of a sudden you went from 1,000 followers to 10,000 followers. Great. Now, what happens when you post a landscape photo from Iceland? It can be an amazing photo, but no one will like it, no one will care, because people will open their profile, or, sorry, open your profile, and they'll be like, why, why I'm following this guy for cool street photography, why is there you know, an arctic fox running around Iceland? I didn't subscribe to this. Now, of course, many people will also appreciate that, but you'll have a chunk of people in this example, 90% of your audience, who just might not relate to what you love posting. And then you end up in this weird position where you now need to start creating specifically for your audience. Otherwise, people leave and you have no engagement. So by all means, if you go viral, great, but make sure you go viral for the thing that you like. Regardless of which path you choose, 
you need to remember that this is a marathon. This doesn't happen overnight and you have to keep working at it for a long time. Another thing you need to remember is there is a lot of luck involved. Yes, you can make your own luck by making sure that you've put the work in and to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time. Obviously, you'll be luckier if you wake up for a foggy sunrise compared to if you sleep in. Obviously, you'll be luckier if you reach out to 20 potential clients every single day compared to waiting for someone to reach out to you but there is still an element of luck involved. You can walk down the street, bump into someone who is an art buyer, who is a um, DP, whatever it might be, you get chatting, an opportunity comes up. Yes, luck does play a part in it. However, you still have to put the work in and make that luck more possible for you, if that makes sense. Now, as for me, I did try freelance photography for a bit. I didn't enjoy it. If I'm totally honest, if I had to rely on 100% freelance photography, so forget my social media, forget YouTube, forget my products, forget everything, just freelance photography, I'd go back to a good nine to five and do this as a hobby because I, I just enjoy that a lot more than always chasing clients. But that's just me. Other people love freelancing and that's all they want to do and that's great. So I've been rambling on for a little while. I hope this video has made some sense. I hope it's given you at least some direction. Now, I am by no means a high-flying commercial photographer. This is just experience based on what I've gone through and based on what I've learned. As I've said at the start, please listen to other photographers. There are many photographers on YouTube who are actual photographers and not just YouTubers. So find them and listen to their advice because then you'll have different opinions to try and figure out what works for you the best. Every time I film these indoor videos, it's just always like this, the sun goes in, out, in, out. The day when I don't need to film this, it's fine, but what can you do? Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video and leave your comments down below, questions, all that good stuff. All right, bye-bye. I'd like to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace for over five years as my online photography portfolio, where I share my best work from all the trips and shoots. Having an online portfolio is important because it's your little corner of the internet that you can arrange however you like. I would also encourage everyone to start an online blog about their photography. Having a blog is the best way for your website to stay relevant on Google because there's fresh content always being uploaded. Not to mention it's a great way for your website to become more searchable through SEO. Squarespace offers powerful blogging tools that will allow you to publish blogs from anywhere on any device. Squarespace also offers powerful analytics that help you understand where your readers are coming from and what they're searching for. If you're an aspiring photographer, having your own website is important because it will elevate you from everyone else. For a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase, please use the link in the description or use code RomanFox when you check out. Thank you for Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching.